shocking backstage punishments in old Hollywood. Many view Hollywood as the ultimate fantasy, picturing celebrities' lavish lifestyles and the sparkle of red carpet events, believing anything is worth it to be a part of this world. Yet, what's seldom realized is that Hollywood isn't the pristine paradise it's portrayed as. Beyond the facade of flawlessness lie hidden shadows and secrets that have been long concealed and ignored. Through time, countless whispers and stories about Hollywood's sinister aspects have spread. For those curious about the validity of these tales, this video is set to reveal the grim and unsettling realities of Hollywood. Prepare yourself, they make things disappear. Have you ever seen those sinister and merciless types in action movies, the clandestine operatives, enlisted by criminal organizations to eradicate evidence? Now, consider the possibility that such characters aren't entirely fictional. What if Hollywood houses its own breed of real-life fixers whose sole purpose is to make unsavory scandals vanish? In the autumn of 2002, startling revelations came to the forefront revealing that an alleged Hollywood cleaner, Anthony Pelicano, had been apprehended. He was accused of involvement in the coercion and menacing of Anita M. Bush, a journalist daring enough to delve into the inner workings of the film industry, and the high-powered Hollywood super agent Michael Ovitz. Bush was allegedly investigating a story about mafia funds funneled into the production of a Steven Seagal movie. It seemed she was close to unearthing sinister truths as she began to receive ominous threats against her life, cautioning her to cease her inquiries. The threats hinted at the protection of some influential figures in the industry. Subsequent probes indicated that Pelicano was the culprit behind the intimidation Bush endured. As astonishing as this was, this wasn't the first instance of Hollywood's affiliation with a hidden network of fixers. Historical accounts suggest that during the silent and golden ages, figures such as Eddie Mannix and Howard Strickling were summoned to handle the crises of celebrities. If stars like Lana Turner and Judy Garland, among others from MGM, fell pregnant without being wed, a fixer would step in to ensure the issue was discreetly resolved to safeguard the star's reputation. Male stars who were interested in the same gender were coerced into fake marriages to women, all to maintain a certain public image with dire repercussions for non-compliance. Though figures like Strickling have long since passed, it would be naive to believe that the role of the fixer has vanished from Hollywood. They may simply operate in deeper shadows. Pelicano, now imprisoned for his actions, is reported to have served the likes of John McTiernan, Chris Rock and Courtney Love. A documentary the Sin Eater, The Crimes of Anthony Pelicano, shines a light on the fixer's hidden dealings. The murky depths of Hollywood and the extreme measures taken by the powerful to preserve their facade. The Curse of a Child, Star. Hollywood has been the spawning ground for some exceptionally gifted child actors who have captured the world's attention. These youthful talents have demonstrated that even children can deliver captivating performances on screen. Despite the innocence and charm they present before the camera, a grim secret has lurked in the shadows for years. Ever since the era of Shirley Temple, there have been whispers about the unseen tribulations faced by these young stars. Although most claims brushed aside, revelations from Shirley Temple's autobiography confirmed the unsettling realities people had long suspected. Despite her tender age, Shirley Temple was regularly cast in peculiar scenes with adult men, some of which were inappropriately suggestive. It wasn't until the release of her autobiography that the veil was finally lifted on the true experiences she endured. Shirley did not hold back, plainly stating that the child actors of her time were subjected to horrendous treatment. She recounted, if any of the preschool-aged children misbehaved on set, they were locked in a windowless booth called the punishment box and forced to sit on a solid block of ice for extended periods of time. Moreover, she disclosed her experiences of being inappropriately touched and menaced by figures behind the scenes, a haunting reality for someone so young who was expected to perform with unwavering cheerfulness for the camera. This ordeal isn't confined to the past, it's a persistent blight. Celebrities in more recent times have mustered the bravery to bring their own harrowing stories to light, aligning with Temple's disclosures. The endearing Macaulay Culkin, who charmed us in Home Alone, also suffered abuse. 
He detailed that during his early days in Hollywood, he encountered unsolicited advances from various celebrities. Tragically, his predicament was compounded by the ill treatment from his father. These narratives from Culkin and Temple are only a fragment of the industry's concealed reality. Cementing the gravity of the issue, in 2014, the arrest of Nickelodeon production assistant Jason Michael Handy on charges of child abuse cast a glaring spotlight on these concealed truths, underlining a distressing aspect of Hollywood that still seeks to stay out of the public eye. Strategic collaborations with the paparazzi. You might have caught a clip of a renowned celebrity confronting the paparazzi, vehemently demanding they refrain from snapping photos. That scene, however, only represents one facet of their relationship. Indeed, paparazzi are infamous for their relentless pursuit of celebrity snapshots across various moments in their lives. Yet nowadays, the interaction between them and the stars is often mutual, aimed to craft a particular image for the media. A recognized paparazzo from Manchester, Aaron Parfit, has remarked on public misperceptions about their profession, stating, I think a lot of people are quite dumb about how it works. People think we are scumbags hanging out of trees, but these celebrities are ringing us. I've been on holiday with celebrities. Most of them are reality stars. We go to Spain, shoot six bikini sets, and stick them out throughout the month. This orchestrated dance between stars and photographers isn't a modern invention. Renowned figures from the golden age of Hollywood would pose in staged romantic photos with their on-screen partners to stoke excitement among fans about a rumored love affair, all as a promotional tactic for their soon-to-release romance flicks. These strategic images would send fans into a frenzy, believing their adored celebrities to be in a real-life romance, not realizing it was a ploy designed to bolster viewership for their impending films. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. The price of perfection. Within an industry where one's public image serves as the cornerstone of their celebrity status, it's unsurprising that stars go to great lengths to embody perfection. However, the extreme measures some undertake to shed pounds and craft an impeccable appearance for interviews and red carpet events, and the adverse health consequences that often follow, remain largely concealed from the public eye. Historically, female celebrities have resorted to various methods to attain what's deemed the ideal physique, including undergoing plastic surgery and adhering to rigorous diets. Despite the flawless image portrayed by icons like Marilyn Monroe, few are aware of her lifelong battle with an eating disorder, underscoring the immense pressure she faced to maintain her slender figure and uphold her position as a global symbol of beauty. In more recent times, the prevalence of eating disorders within the industry has only intensified. Actress Naomi Watts has shared her experiences of fasting for extended periods to ensure her attire looked flawless for a red carpet appearance. Such drastic measures have led some stars into depression, stemming from battling eating disorders, underscoring a somber reality veiled by Hollywood's facade of flawlessness. Thus, when admiring your beloved actresses radiating joy and confidence at red carpet events, it's critical to bear in mind that beneath their poised exteriors, some are enduring profound internal struggles. Age is not just a number. Ageism is alive and well. Jane Fonda's candid words have shed light on a pervasive yet often unaddressed issue within the entertainment sector, particularly within the confines of Hollywood. The problem cuts across genders but manifests more starkly for women, especially as they inch towards the age of 40, at which point many begin to feel apprehensive about a potential decline in available roles. The entertainment industry's infatuation with youthfulness, underpinned by the belief that younger actors attract and relate better to audiences, is at the core of ageism. This bias is heavily influenced by the industry's fixation on appearance, which has historically set unrealistic beauty standards with youth at its ideal. Consequently, actresses face exorbitant pressure to maintain their youthful looks, leading many to turn to drastic and often invasive measures like cosmetic surgery or intense diet and fitness regimes to stave off the signs of aging and keep up with the industry's competitive nature. But time is unrelenting. Jane Fonda, despite her distinguished tenure in Hollywood, has vocally highlighted the age discrimination that actresses endure with diminishing opportunities and unfair judgments as they age. Her reflections serve as a testament to the hurdles faced by seasoned actresses in the industry, irrespective of their past achievements and credibility. 
Moreover, the anxiety over age can push actresses to mask their real age to sidestep bias. The controversy surrounding Margot Robbie's age met with public scrutiny illustrates the intense pressures to conform to a youth-centric image. Robbie's rumoured age misrepresentation underscores a distressing aspect of Hollywood. Ageism can affect an actress's career vitality significantly. Although there are luminaries like Meryl Streep who manage to flourish in an industry that skews young, her continued success, rooted in her extraordinary skill and adaptability, should not be mistaken as an indicator that ageism is no longer an issue. Her achievements are exceptions in a system still grappling with deep-rooted ageist tendencies. Hollywood's preoccupation with eternal youth and impeccability fuels impracticable expectations and perpetuates the marginalization of its elder thespians, evidencing that ageism indeed remains a critical concern. Is organized crime real? In the bygone era of Hollywood, a dreadful episode occurred that rattled the entire community, a collective forcefully entered the residence of the seasoned actor Roman Polanski, resulting in a tragic loss of life. This incident heavily contributed to the belief that organized crime was deeply entrenched within the entertainment sphere. Over the decades, additional revelations have intensified the suspicion that the industry remains under the significant influence of such illicit networks. During the illustrious Golden Age, the iconic Frank Sinatra was associated with the Rat Pack, a group synonymous with Hollywood's essence of allure in the 1950s and 1960s. Sinatra, reputed to have connections with the Mafia through acquaintances like Sam Giancana, led the Rat Pack. Their Las Vegas shows frequently saw attendance by known mob figures, thereby stoking the suspicions of Hollywood's criminal affiliations. Furthermore, various enigmatic demises have led to conjectures about the nefarious underbelly of the industry. From the unresolved homicide of the esteemed director William Desmond Taylor in 1922 to the ambiguous deaths encompassing several actors and producers through the years, rumors of sinister implications have routinely surfaced. Hollywood has long been the subject of speculation regarding its star's links to organized crime. The Trocadero, a renowned hotspot, was frequented by celebrities and prominent industry figures alongside infamous gangsters like Mickey Cohen. Even beyond the Golden Age, Tales of covert dealings with mob elements persisted into the 1970s. For instance, the film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was distributed by Bryanston Pictures, which allegedly had connections to a mafia family. While these accounts might seem as though they're lifted from a screenplay, they reflect a stark reality. Regarding celebrities openly addressing these connections, the discourse remains largely subdued. Some may have subtly referenced or obliquely alluded to such affiliations but explicit acknowledgments are rare. Hollywood's storied past is replete with peculiar and astonishing narratives, with the intertwining of celebrities and organized crime serving as just one intriguing chapter. Animals are treated badly in Hollywood. Throughout the entertainment industry, numerous celebrities have stood up for animal rights, showcasing a commitment to the welfare of animals. However, not everyone involved in filmmaking shares this level of concern. Regrettably, there have been reports of animals suffering ill treatment during the production of films, igniting significant debate over the ethical treatment of animals in the realm of movie making. A particularly striking case of alleged animal mistreatment emerged in 2017 during the making of A Dog's Purpose. Footage leaked online depicted a dog seemingly being coerced into agitated waters for a scene leading to public outcry. Although later investigations suggested that the footage had been misleadingly edited, the uproar it caused brought the issue of animal welfare on set to the forefront. This issue, however, is not a product of modern times alone. The annals of film history contain numerous cases where animals were harmed, often in an effort to achieve more authentic scenes. For instance, the 1925 classic Ben-Hur, along with several vintage westerns, featured distressing scenes of horse falls that put the animals at risk. These incidents highlight a troubling facet of the entertainment industry's past and present, suggesting that in some cases the pursuit of artistic endeavor has come at the expense of animal welfare. Despite the advancements in regulations and guidelines aimed at protecting animals in film production environments, these examples underscore the ongoing challenges in safeguarding animal welfare in the industry. 
It's clear that, even with progress, the battle to ensure the ethical treatment of animals in the world of cinema is far from over. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos. Please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. Is lack of diversity still prevalent? A heart-wrenching clip featuring the African-American actress Taraji P. Henson recently made its way onto the internet. In this video, she's seen in tears, speaking passionately about the systemic injustices and unfair treatment people of color face in the entertainment industry. The ongoing issue of inadequate diversity in Hollywood is impossible to ignore. Actors of color frequently find themselves typecast in roles such as gang members or chauffeurs, while other ethnic minorities are often relegated to playing domestic workers. This stereotype-laden casting reflects a persistent lack of true diversity within the industry. A notable figure who has courageously addressed this issue is the celebrated actress Viola Davis. As an African-American woman in Hollywood, she has consistently raised her voice against the scarcity of roles available to people of color. In her poignant Emmy acceptance speech in 2015, she powerfully stated, The only thing that separates women of color from anyone else is opportunity. You cannot win an Emmy for roles that are simply not there. Davis has brought attention to the tendency of the industry to confine minority actors to stereotypical roles, which narrows their artistic range and continues the cycle of damaging cliches. The lack of diversity in Hollywood is not just a matter of restricted opportunities for minority actors. It's a perpetuator of harmful stereotypes and an upholder of systemic biases. When minority groups are consistently cast in a limited array of stereotypical roles, it propagates the notion that these are the only roles they are suited for. This not only hampers their career growth, but also cements prejudicial stereotypes that resonate throughout society, contributing to discrimination. Moreover, the problematic practice of whitewashing, casting white actors in roles meant for people of color, further marginalizes minority groups and strips them of the chance to narrate their own experiences. Whitewashing diminishes the voices and experiences of people of color, endorsing a narrative that prioritizes white perspectives. For Hollywood to reflect the diversity of the world, it is crucial for the industry to continue striving for inclusivity and creating opportunities that allow actors from all backgrounds to share their unique stories and perspectives on screen. The wild and dark parties are real. The existence of scandalous and often clandestine events within Hollywood has been a topic of speculation and gossip for many years. Celebrities frequently congregate for festive occasions and to unwind from their hectic lifestyles, but there have been ongoing speculations and sporadic exposés pointing to more nefarious activities at some of these parties. One of the most notorious figures associated with this shadowy aspect of Hollywood social life is Heidi Fleiss, dubbed the Hollywood Madam. In the 1990s, she gained notoriety for orchestrating an upscale prostitution ring that catered to affluent and influential clients, many of whom were linked to the entertainment sector. Her capture and the subsequent sensational headlines revealed the seamier side of the elite circles in Hollywood, where allegations of drug misuse and exploitation abounded. The concept of influential individuals misusing their power and engaging in illegal affairs is not unique to our era. Throughout Hollywood's history, there have been numerous incidents and scandals rife with sexual escapades, drug use, and various misdemeanors at gatherings of the rich and celebrated. From the days of Hollywood's golden age to contemporary times, narratives of lavish recklessness have persisted, sometimes shared in hushed tones and occasionally brought to light by the press. The recent assertions made against prominent individuals like P. Diddy serve to reinforce these enduring notions. While it's crucial to scrutinize such claims with a discerning perspective and to acknowledge that not every party in Hollywood is mired in wrongdoing, the continuous circulation of these accounts suggests there might indeed be a more obscure side to the shine and allure of Hollywood. Pet pills and substances on set. To the general public, renowned actors and actresses are individuals who have demonstrated their talent and brought some of Hollywood's finest films to life. While this perception holds true, some actors have resorted to shocking measures on set to produce astonishing movies. It might surprise you to learn that some of your beloved actors have relied on substances to portray their characters convincingly. What's even more startling is that these substances are sometimes available on movie sets. There have been rumors that some stars were pressured into consuming these substances against their will. 
One of the hidden realities in Hollywood that has remained concealed for some time is the provision of illegal substances to actors and actresses to boost their performance. Some films that achieved tremendous success were crafted by actors who had to consume certain substances before performing. This could explain why many movie stars are addicted to these substances. In the past, Judy Garland was reportedly one of the many stars who was regularly administered various drugs before her performances and even interviews. Indeed, she was able to captivate her fans and generate substantial revenue for her studio, but it came with a cost, a lifelong addiction. Dennis Quaid, a gifted actor, is among the few who have revealed this Hollywood secret. He claimed that cocaine was allegedly included in the budget of some of the films he starred in. However, this expenditure was camouflaged as petty cash to prevent anyone from discovering that actors were consuming these substances on set. For many Hollywood celebrities, whether they're belting out a song on stage or immersing themselves in a character on set, appearing on a talk show in front of a crowd of fans is a pleasant and invigorating diversion. They get the opportunity to relax and converse freely. However, some of these celebrities may have overstepped their boundaries, much to the displeasure of the show hosts and production companies. May West and NBC's Bad Blood May West, the renowned screen siren and provocateur of Hollywood's golden era, encountered a substantial hurdle in her career following a contentious occurrence during a humorous radio segment in 1937. During this period, West's stardom was already on the wane and she guest starred on the radio program in an effort to drum up interest for her film Every Day's a Holiday. The script, crafted by Archer Bowler, featured West in the role of Eve with Donna Meche portraying Adam within the biblical paradise. It was during this act that Mae West uttered a phrase which would precipitate her exclusion from NBC outlets and a reprimand from the Federal Communication Commission. The phrase in question, get me a big one, I feel like doing a big apple, sparked outrage among women's organizations and Catholic circles for its perceived vulgarity. This episode stands as one of the earliest examples of content, being flagged as obscene by the FCC, yielding stark consequences for both West and NBC. In the aftermath of the Ferrari, NBC pointed fingers at Mae West, dismissing her from their employ. Moreover, they issued a directive that banned any reference to her on their broadcasts. This prohibition essentially curtailed West's radio appearances for the ensuing 15 years until 1950. The reverberations of this event profoundly marred Mae West's professional path. Notwithstanding her earlier magnitude and influence on the silver screen, her visibility in the limelight was greatly diminished for an extended period owing to the fallout from her contentious radio stint. Lisa Lasser's strange behavior, Louise Lasser, famously known for her starring role in Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, attracted unwelcome attention due to her odd and fragmented segment on The Tonight Show, hosted by Johnny Carson. Her perplexing interview is remembered as one of the most unusual occurrences in the program's legacy, leaving both the audience and those behind the scenes perplexed. Lasser exhibited unusual behavior from the outset, at one point hesitating to emerge from her dressing room, which led the show's producers to almost call off her participation. Her actions off stage were characterized by confusing dialogue during discussions, moving along the corridors on her hands and knees and choosing to replace prepared scripts with her peculiar concepts. Upon her eventual appearance on the program, her involvement was marked by odd, disconnected utterances, Lasser's peculiar behavior prompted skepticism regarding the sincerity of her initial monologue, during which she feigned a nervous meltdown and barricaded herself in a dressing room. This odd event resulted in Lasser being prohibited from future appearances on the show. The precise motives behind her behavior are unclear, but it is believed that Lasser was dealing with personal difficulties, including issues related to substance abuse and mental anguish around that time. Carson, who was meticulous about his show's content and quality, clearly found Lasser's performance unacceptable. Consequently, she faced an informal ban from returning to the show. Her notable absence from Carson's program underscored her estrangement from the host's selective booking routine. In the context of Hollywood, where reputation is paramount, being barred from a prominent mainstream stage like The Tonight Show could potentially tarnish a celebrity's public image. Nonetheless, 
Despite this incident in 1976 posing a challenge, Lassa's career didn't come to a standstill. She continued to secure roles on television throughout the late 1970s, particularly in her acclaimed series, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Nevertheless, the peculiar episode remains a noteworthy yet awkward chapter in the annals of The Tonight Show, highlighting the personal issues Lassa was confronting behind the limelight during that period. Andy Kaufman voted off the show, perfecting his comedic art in the early 1970s stand-up scene. Andy Kaufman's exceptionally peculiar style of anti-comedy and eccentric acts started drawing the eye of television's influential figures. Come 1975, Kaufman realized his lifelong aspiration, stepping into the limelight of Studio 8H in New York City, the famed location of NBC's Saturday Night Live. It was a pinnacle moment for Kaufman, who as a young boy dreamt of captivating make-believe audiences with his television spectacle. His debut on the SNL stage on October 11, 1975, commenced an eight-year journey with the comedy sketch show. During this period, Kaufman appeared 16 times, leaving behind a legacy of iconic comedic acts that redefined the genre. His performances ranged from the quirky Mighty Mouse playback to the character of the lovable foreign man, each pushing the envelope of traditional comedy and leaving a lasting impression on SNL. However, it was in 1983 that Kaufman incited significant controversy with his most contentious SNL act, championing himself as the intergender wrestling victor. In this audacious performance, Kaufman challenged women from the audience to a wrestling match, declaring himself as the world's intergender wrestling champion. This stunt stirred a mix of outrage and critical discussion over its depiction of gender roles. Amid this turmoil, SNL's executive producer at the time, Dick Ebersol, resolved to tackle the controversy head on. In a bold initiative, Ebersol left Kaufman's return to the show in the hands of its viewers, orchestrating a vote to determine his fate. The outcome, with 195,504 votes, casting Kaufman out, and 169,170 in favor of retaining him, unmistakably signaled his exit from SNL. This resolution caused disappointment and consternation among the show's cast and his comedic peers, leading to skepticism over Ibersol's daring strategy. For Kaufman, this exclusion was a harsh setback, Despite his attempts to sway public opinion by buying advertising time on local television stations, he never made a comeback to SNL. Regrettably, Kaufman passed away a year later. His life story interwoven with both creative brilliance and contentious episodes, leaving a legacy that continues to intrigue and inspire to this day. Robert Blake's awful comment. Robert Blake, recognized for his role in the television series Beretta, was expelled from Saturday Night Live following an unsavory incident during his hosting duties in 1982. This event was detailed by former SNL scribe David Sheffield in the book Live from New York, highlighting Blake's improper behavior towards the show's crew during a practice session. Blake was given a comedic piece titled Breezy Philosopher by writer-performer Gary Kroger, which featured a macho instructor who doled out lessons whilst managing his hair and maintaining a laid-back attitude. Nonetheless, Blake's response to the material was anything but receptive. Peering over his glasses, he disdainfully read the sketch, proceeding to scrunch it up while making a vulgar comment to Kroger. Blake's words to Kroger were, I hope you got a tough, expletive pal, because you're going to have to wipe your ass with that one. He then flung the balled-up script at Kroger, striking him in the face. Blake's violent and disrespectful conduct towards an SNL staff member resulted in an immediate ban from the program. His actions breached professional conduct and respectability. Although this episode led to Blake's exclusion from SNL, it wasn't the sole instance of problematic behavior linked to him. Regardless of the ban from the show, Blake's career persisted, but it was later overshadowed by legal troubles and scandals, including the accusation in his wife, Bonnie Lee Buckley's homicide. The 2001 occurrence on SNL stands as a testament to the repercussions of ill-treatment within the showbiz realm and underscores the significance of professionalism and courtesy in any professional setting. Sandra Bernhardt and her personality clash. In the late 70s, the bold and provocative Sandra Bernhardt made waves with her unique fusion of sensual stand-up routines and social critique, inspired by her comedic hero, Joan Rivers. 
Bernhard quickly secured a recurring spot on The Tonight Show, where she frequently traded quips with Johnny Carson during the 1980s. However, by 1988, her regular appearances on the programme ceased, allegedly by Carson's own decision. Although there was no formal prohibition, Bernhard's absence from the show's lineup suggested an unofficial dismissal thought to be the result of Carson taking umbrage at her boundary-pushing humour. Sources intimate that Carson grew tired of Bernhard's penchant for delving into edgy subjects such as politics, which often seemed to unsettle him on screen. But it wasn't merely a matter of contrasting comedic tastes that created a divide between the two. As the revered figurehead of late-night TV since the 60s, Carson was a paragon of traditional values which stood in contrast to Bernhard's explicit feminist stance. Their dynamic deteriorated on air as Bernhard's iconoclastic material progressively encroached on the standards of decorum upheld by Carson. While Carson sought to deliver comfortable, easygoing entertainment for mainstream America, Bernhard remained unapologetically firm in articulating her countercultural comedy. The effects of her removal from Carson's show were significant, stunting Bernhard's career growth. Lacking the vast television reach afforded by The Tonight Show, Bernhard nonetheless pressed on with her resolute dedication to her craft. For her, the real victory was not in gaining acceptance from Carson or the broader American audience, but in maintaining fidelity to her vision and humor. Looking back, Bernhard's stint on The Tonight Show highlights the intricate challenge of blending comedy with prevailing cultural norms. Though her exclusion from Carson's program might have curbed her conventional acclaim, it also reinforced her reputation as an intrepid pioneer within the world of stand-up comedy. Kathleen Turner vs Johnny Carson Kathleen Turner, a renowned actress, faced a career setback after being banned from The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson in the early 1990s. Turner's reputation had begun to suffer due to rumors of diva-like behavior and a difficult attitude on set. The ban reportedly resulted from her comments downplaying the importance of late-night talk show appearances, which Carson took as a personal affront. As a result, Turner was excluded from the show's guest lineup, a significant blow to her A-list status. This exclusion accelerated her decline in popularity and her star power began to fade. However, Turner proved resilient and embarked on a new path, finding success on Broadway later that decade. This second act showcased her versatility and enduring appeal, but her prospects within the Hollywood studio system diminished significantly after her falling out with Carson. Turner's story highlights the complexities of fame and the importance of resilience in overcoming adversity. Despite her ban from The Tonight Show, Turner's legacy as a talented actress endures and her journey serves as a testament to the power of reinvention in the face of challenges. In the vintage corridors of old Hollywood and the nascent years of television, behind the glamour and the laughter, there lay a world of sharp consequences. From Mae West's seductive quips to Louise Lasser's peculiar antics, and from the irrepressible Sandra Bernhard to the enigmatic Andy Kaufman, these figures pushed the envelope sometimes reaching a breaking point with those who held the reins of their careers. Robert Blake's sudden downfall reminds us that crossing the line of respectability was never without repercussions. As we've journeyed through these shocking backstage punishments and the often unforgiving nature of show business, one can't help but wonder about the stories untold and the price of creativity in an era of rigid norms. Did these instances of censure serve as necessary checks or were they symptomatic of a stifling culture yet to evolve? Share your thoughts. If you've enjoyed uncovering these snippets of history and would like to dive deeper, comment with the letter 9. For more enthralling tales and discussions that pierce through the veneer of Tinseltown, don't forget to like, subscribe and follow Iconic Inside. Your insights mould our community and ensure that the legacy of entertainment's most controversial turning points continues to captivate us all. 15 famous people who lost everything. Then I had a very public bankruptcy filing because I've been trying to maintain all this stuff. Welcome to the shocking truth about fame and fortune. You think you know the glamorous lives of celebrities, but behind the red carpet and flashing cameras, many have lost it all. Mike Tyson of raping her back in 1990. We're talking millions of dollars, luxurious mansions, and even their reputations all gone in an instant. 
from tax evasion to reckless spending. Um, I lost a significant portion of money uh, gambling. And from scandals to personal struggles, these 15 famous faces have experienced the ultimate downfall. You'll be stunned to see how quickly their fortunes reversed, leaving them with nothing but debt, shame and regret. Get ready for a jaw-dropping ride as we expose the dark side of fame and reveal the celebrities who lost everything. Trust us, you won't believe what happened to these stars who went from riches to rags. 20. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, a legendary boxer, had a tumultuous career and personal life. Growing up in Brooklyn's Brownsville neighborhood, he was exposed to violence from a young age. His mother's struggles with alcoholism led to his enrollment in a reform school in upstate New York, where he discovered his boxing talent under Cus D'Amato's guidance. At just 20, Tyson became the youngest heavyweight champion in history, a remarkable achievement. However, his personal life was marred by difficulties. His marriage to actress Robin Givens in 1988 ended in divorce the following year, with allegations of physical abuse. As Givens poignantly stated, it got to the point where I really believed I was going to die. Tyson faced numerous assault and harassment charges in the subsequent years. In 1990, he suffered a shocking loss to James Buster Douglas, marking the end of his championship reign. Following the deaths of his mentors, D'Amato and Jimmy Jacobs, Tyson began working with the controversial promoter Don King. Despite this, he successfully defended his world heavyweight title 10 times, securing victories over former champions Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks. Tyson knocks out Spinks in just 91 seconds to leave no doubts as to who the heavyweight king was. Throughout his life, Tyson has been open about his struggles with mental health, acknowledging his long battle with depression. He has also spoken candidly about his inability to control himself during the height of his career. The fame that came with being a young champion brought Tyson many opportunities, but it also took a toll on him. His story is a poignant example of both incredible success and devastating failure. From overcoming a childhood of violence and neglect to becoming a black icon and world boxing champion, Tyson's journey is remarkable. However, he also bears the burden of being a convicted rapist, having faced numerous personal and professional challenges. His story serves as a reminder that even the most celebrated individuals can face significant struggles and setbacks. 19. Lindsay Lohan Lindsay Lohan, a talented American actress and singer, rose to fame as a child, model and actress, captivating audiences and earning critical acclaim. Her early success propelled her to teen idol status, but unfortunately, her personal struggles and legal issues soon followed. The troubles began during the filming of Georgia Rule in 2006, marking the start of a challenging decade for Lindsay. Her personal life became a magnet for media attention with high-profile legal troubles, court appearances and stints in rehab dominate in the headlines. This tumultuous period led to lost roles, a tarnished public image and a stalled career. Despite attempts to revive her acting career with roles in Liz and Dick and The Canyons, both films received negative reviews. In 2013, she partnered with Oprah Winfrey on the documentary series Lindsay, which chronicled her efforts to reboot her career. Unfortunately, personal and legal challenges persisted. While Lindsay's early achievements as a child model and actress were remarkable, her personal life has been marred by numerous struggles that have impacted her career. However, there's a glimmer of hope. In recent years, Lindsay has been on a path of redemption and we can only wish her the best in her efforts to get back on track. It's not too late for a comeback and we hope she finds the strength to overcome her challenges and reclaim her place in the spotlight. 18. Stephen Baldwin Stephen Baldwin, one of the four Baldwin brothers, has had a successful acting career, but his personal finances have been a different story. In 2009, he filed for bankruptcy, citing debts totaling over $2 million. This included two mortgages on a house worth only $1.1 million, over $1 million in unpaid taxes, and credit card debt. Three years later, Stephen was arrested for failing to file taxes for three years, resulting in a debt of $400,000 in back taxes, interest and penalties. However, the court waived the interest and penalties, reducing his debt by $50,000, 
and he was eventually able to negotiate a further reduction of $300,000. He was ordered to repay the remaining amount within a year or face a five-year probationary period. Unfortunately, Stephen's financial troubles didn't end there. In 2017, his house went into foreclosure because he had failed to make his monthly mortgage payments of $7,000 for over six years. By 2016, his debt had ballooned to $1.1 million. He had originally taken out an $812,500 loan to purchase the four-bedroom home in 2000. According to experts, Stephen moved to a modest apartment in Queens and worked hard to pay off his tax debt. He eventually managed to clear his debt just before his daughter, Haley Baldwin, got engaged to Justin Bieber. It's worth noting that Stephen's financial struggles have been a long-term issue, but he seems to have made progress in recent years. Despite his financial woes, he has continued to work as an actor and has been open about his struggles. Hopefully, he has turned a corner and will continue to manage his finances effectively. 17. Dion Warwick Legendary singer Dionne Warwick has had a remarkable music career, but her personal finances have been a different story. In 2013, she filed for bankruptcy, citing a staggering $10.2 million in unpaid taxes. Her publicist attributed her financial struggles to poor financial management. The debts included $7 million owed to the IRS for the years 1991 to 1999 and over $3 million in business taxes owed to California. Despite filing for bankruptcy, the IRS insisted her debt was valid and continued to demand payment, even after Dion took legal action. The legal battle with the IRS dragged on for years. At one point, Dion accused the IRS of violating a court order when they tried to seize assets over allegedly unpaid taxes for 2011 to 2012, totaling $1,489. Finally, after a long and costly legal fight, Dion and the IRS agreed to drop their respective lawsuits. According to court documents, the dismissal meant a trial was no longer necessary. Hopefully, Dion has managed to overcome this massive debt and is now on firmer financial ground. It's worth noting that Dion's financial struggles serve as a reminder that even successful individuals can face financial challenges. Her case highlights the importance of effective financial management and seeking help when needed. Let's hope she has indeed overcome her financial troubles and continues to thrive in her music career. 16. Antoine Walker Antoine Walker, a former NBA player, had a remarkable 12-year career, earning a staggering $108 million. However, after retiring from the NBA in 2008, Antoine faced significant financial challenges. He made some poor financial decisions, investing in unsuccessful real estate projects and losing large sums through gambling. Just two years after retiring, Antoine filed for bankruptcy. He attempted to recover by launching his own real estate firm, but it failed during the 2008 recession. Antoine partly blames his financial advisors for his troubles, citing their advice to invest in real estate deals. To make matters worse, he used his personal finances as collateral and ended up paying back around $20 million to banks. Antoine also faced legal issues after failing to pay $770,000 in gambling debts to Caesars Palace and two other Las Vegas casinos. However, Antoine has since bounced back and overcome his significant debt. Today, he works as a consultant for Educor, a company focused on financial literacy for athletes. He advises others to take responsibility for their financial decisions and seek guidance from professionals like CPAs, lawyers and agents who can help protect against impulsive spending. It's great to see Antoine has turned his life around and is now helping others avoid similar financial pitfalls. His story serves as a reminder that even those with significant wealth can face financial challenges, but with the right guidance and mindset, recovery is possible. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. 15. Gary Coleman Gary Coleman, the former child star of the popular TV show Different Strokes, faced a significant financial downturn. In 1999, at just 31 years old, he filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy, citing a debt of $72,000. This was a far cry from his earlier success. Gary's financial troubles began when he took legal action against his adopted parents and former manager, alleging they had mismanaged his trust fund. Although he was awarded $1.3 million in damages, he had to pay $200,000 in legal fees and an additional $100,000 to his former manager as part of the settlement. 
Compounding his financial struggles were significant medical expenses. Born with a congenital kidney disease, Gary required multiple surgeries and transplants, as well as ongoing medication to control seizures. Despite these challenges, Gary remains a beloved figure in the entertainment industry and his iconic catchphrase, what are you talking about Willis, continues to be remembered fondly. It's a reminder that even those who achieve great success at a young age can face unexpected financial challenges. Gary's story highlights the importance of effective financial management and planning for the future. 14. Sinbad Comedian Sinbad whose real name is David Adkins, was on top of the world in the early 90s with his own TV show and successful film career. However, he lost his $1 million fortune due to poor financial management, health issues and tax problems that led to bankruptcy. Sinbad thought he could overcome his financial struggles by landing one more big movie role, but it never came. OK, I'll get one more movie and I'll wipe these bills out, but that movie didn't come. He filed for bankruptcy due to tax issues, leaving him with a debt of $1 million and a monthly income of only $116,000. To make matters worse, Sinbad also faced health issues, including a stroke in 2020. Despite these setbacks, his family remained optimistic about his recovery. You know, Sinbad had a stroke two years ago and is learning to walk again. Now, his family and close friends are revealing the extent of the damage and stated that he was getting better every day. His net worth has rebounded to $4 million and he continues to be a beloved comedian who brings joy and laughter to many generations. Sinbad's financial troubles began when he owed over $8 million to the IRS and another $2 million in debt. He spent more than he earned thinking his next big movie would cover his expenses, but it never happened. His story serves as a reminder of the importance of financial responsibility and planning for the future. Despite his struggles, Sinbad remains a light source of love and joy for many people, and his reputation as a talented comedian continues to shine. 13. Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage, a renowned American actor, once enjoyed a net worth of over $150 million, making him one of Hollywood's highest paid stars. However, his extravagant spending habits, including purchasing European castles, a fleet of Rolls Royces, and exotic items like a dinosaur skull, led to financial difficulties. His troubles were compounded by unpaid taxes, which sparked issues with the IRS, and the 2007 to 2008 financial crisis, which wiped out a significant portion of his assets. To recover from these catastrophic losses, Nicholas took on numerous movie roles to get back on track. While he has starred in many successful films, his reputation has suffered in recent years due to a string of poorly received movies. Many of his films now go straight to DVD or streaming services, and their rapid release often goes unnoticed except by his most devoted fans. Despite this, Nicholas continues to work as an actor and has recently appeared in critically acclaimed films like Mandy and Pig. These unconventional yet beloved films have contributed to his cult status in Hollywood and signalled a comeback of sorts. Today, Nicolas Cage remains a fascinating figure, still working in the industry and enjoying a resurgence of sorts with his distinctive and offbeat film choices. 12. Robert Van Winkle Robert Van Winkle, better known as Vanilla Ice, experienced a meteoric rise to fame in the music industry. His 1990 album, To the Extreme, sold an astonishing 15 million copies worldwide, making it the fastest selling album since Prince's Purple Rain six years earlier. However, his success was short lived, and he soon found himself struggling to maintain his foothold in the industry. Vanilla Ice's popularity began to wane, and he faced personal struggles with drug use and depression. Before his music career took off, Van Winkle was inspired by hip-hop and breakdancing as a teenager. His friends nicknamed him Vanilla due to his being the only non-black member of their group. He started battle rapping at parties and later joined a breakdancing troupe, adopting the stage name Vanilla Ice. His rise to fame began when he was discovered on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in South Dallas in the late 1980s. Within two years, he released To the Extreme, which catapulted him to superstardom. Despite his success, Vanilla Ice later regretted his business arrangements with SBK Records, which had pressured him to adopt a more commercial image and appeal to a broader audience. 
He felt that the label had fabricated biographical information without his knowledge or consent. Although he continued to release music, including soundtrack appearances and a live album, his subsequent studio albums failed to chart or receive significant radio airplay. In an effort to revitalize his career, Vanilla Ice tried his hand at various professions, including professional jet skiing. His story serves as a cautionary tale of the fleeting nature of fame and the importance of maintaining creative control and authenticity in the music industry. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. 11. MC Hammer MC Hammer, born Stanley Kirk Burrell, was a music sensation in the late 1980s with his unique rap style and fashion sense. His hit song, You Can't Touch This, 1990, catapulted him to global stardom, earning him a reported $30 million annually, with an estimated fortune of $70 million at his peak. However, just five years later, MC Hammer's lavish spending habits led him to file for bankruptcy, making his story one of the most notable cases of celebrity financial downfalls. MC Hammer's financial troubles began with a spending spree that included purchasing 17 luxury cars, a private jet, two helicopters, and 21 racehorses, some valued at around $1 million each. He also hired a staff of 200 people, despite sound financial advice to the contrary, costing him $500,000 monthly. His biggest expenditure was on real estate, purchasing a California property for $12 million and spending an additional $30 million to create his dream home. The property featured gold-plated front gates, a recording studio, 17-car garage, tennis courts, two swimming pools, a bowling alley, basketball court and baseball triangle. He even installed marble statues of himself and a gold hot tub in his bedroom, inspired by his stays in luxurious hotels while touring. However, his extravagant spending soon outweighed his income, and by 1996, he filed for bankruptcy with over 200 creditors and debts totaling at least $10 million, with only $1 million in assets. He eventually sold his home for $6.5 million and moved into a more modest residence. MC Hammer's story serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of overspending and poor financial management, even for those with immense wealth and success. 10. Kim Basinger Kim Basinger, a talented actress and model, faced significant financial challenges in the early 1990s. In 1993, she was taken to court by a production company for breaching her contract when she withdrew from a film project. The company claimed her actions resulted in millions of dollars in lost potential sales and put hundreds of people out of work. The court ordered Kim to pay substantial damages for her withdrawal. To make matters worse, Kim had also made a questionable investment in real estate. She and her business partners purchased an entire town with plans to develop it into a tourist attraction and film studio. However, the project never materialized and they were forced to sell the property at a significant loss. They paid $20 million for the property but sold it for just $4.3 million. These financial setbacks, combined with the looming judgment from the lawsuit, left Kim with no choice but to file for bankruptcy. Her lawyer revealed that her net worth was only a fraction of what she owed, making bankruptcy the only option. By filing, Kim was able to avoid the immediate seizure of her assets. Despite these challenges, Kim was able to bounce back and continue her successful career in Hollywood. She even won an Academy Award for her performance in a film several years later. Today, her net worth is estimated to be in the millions a testament to her resilience and determination. 9. Pamela Anderson Pamela Anderson, the blonde bombshell, has been a household name for decades, captivating audiences with her acting, modeling and media presence. Her iconic slow-motion runs on Baywatch and Playboy modeling work have cemented her status as a pop culture icon, leading to numerous lucrative endorsements and modeling deals. However, alongside her success, Pamela has been embroiled in controversy, including the release of a sex tape she made with her then-husband Tommy Lee, which was leaked without their consent and sparked a media frenzy. Pamela is also a passionate animal rights activist, and while her compassion for animals is admirable, she has been involved in some contentious causes. 
For instance, in September 2009, CNN Airport Network refused to air a video of her stripping to raise awareness for Peter. Despite this, Pamela remains a beloved figure and her dedication to animal rights and philanthropy continues to inspire fans worldwide. 8. Wesley Snipes Wesley Snipes, a Hollywood legend known for his iconic roles in New Jack City and Blade, faced a tumultuous period in the early 2000s. In 2006, he was charged with tax fraud and conspiracy, accused of willfully failing to file millions of dollars in past tax returns. Two years later, he was sentenced to three years in prison. Prosecutors pushed for the maximum sentence due to Snipes' failure to file his taxes and pay millions. Despite losing his appeal, Snipes accepted the consequences of his actions and served two and a half years before being released in 2013. Reflecting on his time in prison, Snipes expressed hope that he emerged a better person, having learned the value of time and how it's often squandered. He took responsibility for his decisions, acknowledging that no one forced him to choose his accountant or lawyer. Despite this setback, Snipes has made a successful comeback in Hollywood, appearing in several movies and TV shows, including a sequel to Coming to America alongside Eddie Murphy. 7. Dennis Rodman Dennis Rodman, nicknamed The Worm, is a multifaceted personality who has made a name for himself in basketball, acting and even politics. With a current net worth of approximately $500,000, he earned a substantial $27 million during his NBA career, equivalent to around $43 million today. His most lucrative season was 1996 to 1997, when he ranked 10th among the highest paid players, taking home $9 million. However, Rodman's extravagant lifestyle and financial challenges have been well documented. His personal life has also been complex, with significant child support payments, including a reported $860,000. In 2012, he faced legal issues for missing payments and was ordered to pay $500,000 in back child support to his ex-wife. Interestingly, Rodman has also played an unexpected role in international diplomacy, serving as a sort of unofficial ambassador between the US and North Korea, this unusual turn in his life has added another layer to his already fascinating story. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. 6. Lena Dunham Lena Dunham, a talented and versatile creative force, has made a significant impact in the entertainment industry. Lena Dunham's meteoric rise to fame was marked by her hit HBO series Girls, which she created, wrote and starred in. But her success was short-lived as her controversial book Not That Kind of Girl A Young Woman Tells You What She's Learned sparked a firestorm of criticism and outrage. The book's explicit content, including her admission of sexually experimenting with her younger sister Grace, left many feeling uncomfortable and even outraged. The backlash was swift and merciless, with many accusing Dunham of inappropriate behaviour and exploitation. The controversy surrounding her memoir led to a heated debate but it was clear that Dunham's reputation had taken a serious hit. Her attempts to defend her work and her actions only made things worse, and soon she found herself ostracized by many in the entertainment industry. Today, Lena Dunham's career is a shadow of its former self. Her creative output has slowed to a trickle, and she's become a cautionary tale for celebrities who push the envelope too far. Her story serves as a reminder that with great fame comes great responsibility, and that the consequences of our actions can be severe and long-lasting. 5. Willie Nelson Willie Nelson, a country music legend, faced a financial crisis in the early 1980s. Willie Nelson's music career spans over six decades with a catalogue of iconic songs like Whiskey River, On the Road Again and Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. He's a pioneer of the outlaw country movement and his unique voice and activism have made him a beloved figure in the music industry. But in the early 1980s, Willie invested in a tax shelter that was deemed illegal by the IRS. The resulting tax bill of $16.7 million was staggering, and federal authorities seized almost all his possessions, including his ranch, recording studio, and most of his instruments, recordings, and memorabilia. The only item spared was his trusty guitar, Trigger. On November 9, 1990, federal authorities raided his home, leaving Willie with almost nothing. 
It was a devastating blow, but Willie refused to give up on his music. He continued to tour and record, and his dedication paid off. He has since bounced back, amassing an estimated net worth of $25 million. Willie's story is a testament to his resilience and dedication to his craft. Despite the financial ruin, he continued to pursue his passion for music and has since become an icon in the country music scene. His ability to overcome adversity and continue creating music that resonates with fans worldwide is a true inspiration. From the depths of financial ruin to a successful music career spanning decades, Willie Nelson remains an icon in the country music scene. His legacy extends beyond his music with activism on behalf of farmers, the environment, and social justice making him a beloved figure beyond the music world. Willie's story serves as a reminder that even in the darkest moments, dedication and passion can lead to a triumphant comeback. He's a shining example of how to overcome adversity and continue creating something meaningful, and his music continues to inspire new generations of fans. 4. Courtney Love Courtney Love, the dynamic lead vocalist of the alternative rock band Hole, has built a career on her unapologetic stage presence and provocative lyrics. Formed in 1989, Hole has been a staple of the music industry, but Courtney's personal life has often overshadowed her professional accomplishments. Her marriage to Kurt Cobain, the late Nirvana frontman, was highly publicized, and his tragic death in 1994 sparked controversy and speculation. Many have questioned Courtney's involvement in his death, citing the unusual circumstances of the suicide weapon. However, there is no concrete evidence to support these claims. Courtney has faced numerous legal challenges throughout her career, including arrests for drug use and assault with a deadly weapon in 2003. She was subsequently ordered to attend rehab and placed on probation for three years in 2005. Despite these setbacks, Courtney has continued to create music with Hole and pursue an acting career. She has also become an advocate for various social causes, including LGBTQ plus rights and animal rights. Throughout her life, Courtney has been marked by controversy, but her unwavering dedication to her craft and her unapologetic attitude have cemented her place in the music industry. Love's story serves as a testament to the power of resilience and the importance of staying true to oneself, even in the face of adversity. 3. Janice Dickinson Janice Dickinson, a pioneering supermodel of the 1970s and 1980s, faced a financial crisis in 2013, struggling with a debt of nearly $1 million. Court documents revealed the severity of her situation, which she openly discussed with a journalist, expressing her distress and feeling overwhelmed. The primary cause of her debt was a series of cosmetic procedures, including dermatological and surgical treatments. Additionally, she owed over $500,000 in back taxes to the IRS in New York and California. To make matters worse, she was evicted from her rented home in Los Angeles, owing three months' rent, totaling $17,700. With no means to pay off her debts, Janice filed for bankruptcy in 2013. Janice's career has been marked by controversy, particularly during her time as a judge on America's Next Top Model from 2003 to 2006. Her harsh critiques and comments sparked debate, including a statement where she doubted a plus-size model's potential to win and criticized a black model's retouched photos, likening them to a Hitchcock film. When confronted about these comments, Janice downplayed their significance, attributing them to acting and the nature of TV. However, audiences were quick to point out the influence and impact of her words on a popular show. Despite her controversial remarks, Janice remains an iconic figure in the fashion world, remembered by some as a trailblazing supermodel who contributed significantly to the industry. Others criticize her for her hurtful comments on reality TV shows. Regardless, Janice's legacy is complex, reflecting both her accomplishments and her mistakes. 2. Anna Nicole Smith Anna Nicole Smith's life was a tumultuous mix of fame, fortune and tragedy. Born Vicky Lynn Marshall, she rose to fame in the 1990s as a model and actress, famously marrying oil tycoon J. Howard Marshall II, 63 years her senior. After his passing, Anna became embroiled in a lengthy legal battle with his son, E. Pierce Marshall, over her late husband's vast fortune. The legal saga spanned nearly 15 years, culminating in a 2011 Supreme Court ruling that ultimately denied Anna's estate the millions awarded by a bankruptcy court. The Supreme Court's decision 
in a 5-4 to four majority vote, determined that the bankruptcy court had exceeded its authority in awarding Anna over 400 million in damages. Although separate legal proceedings continued in different courts, Anna's estate lost its claim to the fortune. Tragically, Anna's life was marked by controversy, drug abuse and multiple romantic relationships. Her life ended in a tragic, accidental overdose of prescription drugs at just 39 years old in 2007. Opinions about Anna vary widely, with some remembering her as a talented and beautiful model and actress, while others recall her controversial personal life and legal battles. Despite her tumultuous life, Anna's legacy remains a testament to the complexities of fame, fortune and the human experience. 1. Leif Garrett Leif Garrett was the epitome of a teen idol in the late 1970s, charming, androgynous and talented. With hits like Surfing USA, I Was Made For Dancing and Run Around Sue, he captured the hearts of millions of young fans. His music and style influenced a generation and he became a staple on teen magazines. However, behind the glamour and fame, Leif was struggling. His substance abuse issues began to spiral out of control and the pressures of fame took a toll on his mental health. In 1979, Leif was involved in a car accident that left his friend, Roland West, paralyzed from the neck down. The guilt and trauma from the accident, combined with his existing addiction issues, sent Leif's life into a downward spiral. Despite attempts at rehab and comebacks, Leif's personal and financial troubles continued to mount. His spending habits and drug addiction led him down a path of financial ruin, culminating in bankruptcy in 2023. The once beloved idol shocked fans with his aged appearance at 61, prompting him to open up about his post-fame life and the factors behind his downfall. In a candid reflection, Leif shared the harsh realities of living a lie and the devastating consequences of his addiction. I was living a lie and it was killing me, he said. I was so caught up in the fame and the fortune that I forgot who I was as a person. Leif's story is a cautionary tale about the dangers of substance abuse and the pressures of fame. Despite achieving initial success, Leif ultimately lost everything due to his struggles with addiction and financial mismanagement. However, he's using his experience to warn others and inspire hope. With the release of his book, Idol Truth, Leif offers a raw and honest account of his rise to fame, his subsequent struggles, and his journey towards redemption. Through his story, Leif hopes to serve as a warning to others, especially young people who are chasing fame and fortune, that's it for today's video on 15 famous people who lost everything. It's a harsh reminder that success is not guaranteed and even the most talented and wealthy can fall from grace. So what can we learn from these stories? Firstly, fame and fortune are fleeting and we should never take them for granted. Secondly, our actions have consequences and we must be mindful of our decisions. Lastly, redemption is possible, but it requires hard work and determination. Now we want to hear from you. Who do you think suffered the most among the celebrities we featured? Let us know by commenting with the letter of your choice. A. Mike Tyson B. Pamela Anderson C. Leif Garrett But if you think someone else suffered the most, feel free to comment the first letter of their name and we'll know who you're talking about. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Iconic Inside, for more content on the fascinating lives of celebrities. Join the conversation and let's explore the highs and lows of fame together. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.